Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second September meeting of Board of Trustees. Uh, we have two trustees, fiscal officer, uh, fire chief is with us, um, valued member of the public, um, Mark, that's you. Uh, <laughs> and our road administrator is uh, not with us this evening. Other than that, we're ready to go. I would entertain a motion at this point for adoption of the minutes of, uh, well, we might as well start because we're going to reduce that, August 15th, which we put off last time. Um, I have no idea what's parliamentary. Do we table them again or just not even mention it or why don't we continue to table? Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion regarding that motion. Hearing none, may your voice vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Pallister? Yes. Okay, I would now entertain a motion to approve minutes of September 7th, 2022. I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Yes. We have second. a motion and a second. Are there any further additions, corrections, deletions from the, from the board? Mm -hmm. I'll get the agenda. Okay. Um, second page, please. About halfway down, just before it says cemetery report. Uh, last line is conversation on this topic will continue. Uh, I just thought we'd give him credit, my dad, because I thought it was a good idea. Uh, Richard's office suggested issuing a key card instead of a deposit uh, to a responsible person uh, for uh, of the requesting organization. Oh, okay. Um, so that would go in after the first sentence. Mm -hmm. Or no, after Ms. Moore stated she was not particularly in support of charging a fee. Yeah. Or after I said it's hard to find somebody willing to do the job. That's why I guess okay, the, yes. I, we ended up Excuse doing me. it at the end. But okay, well, it, anywhere in there. If you could give me the few minutes when sure. the, the, it says that. So okay. I don't have to try to squeeze it in right now. All right. <laughs> so um, it has amended. Last sentence of that same second page. Uh, it says, uh, Ms. Moyer and Mr. Hollister expressed support in the idea. Uh, it could be of the idea, but it's neither, neither here nor there. But I'd throw my name in there too, because I said, Me too. I'd like to have me too. Okay. And uh, very last line in old business. Announced that a meeting of the Village of Yellow Springs Council Wise Board, School Board, and Miami Township Trustees scheduled for September 29th. There is a new new time of that. Everybody didn't get it at 7 p.m. instead of 5 or 5 30, whatever it's originally oh. scheduled. Yeah. So you just want me to add p.m. on there? At 5 p.m. It's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. <coughs> and that is all I have. Did you have the I now obtain a motion to approve payments and bills the amount of $43,934.23. Broken down general fund, $3,535.95. Fire fund, $30,227.53. Cemetery fund, $404.76. EMS billing, $6,338.15. Um, road bridge, $3,427.84. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, yes, I move that we approve this. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding the payment of these counts? I don't think I noticed a check for the Kinkaro car invoice that I Well, um, we haven't received it yet. Well, it's not COD. It's, it's well, I didn't know that. I was, you said it's not going to be delivered for eight weeks, and I thought. Shouldn't we wait until it's arrived before we give them money? <laughs> that's my that was my thinking, so that's why I didn't cut a check. Well, but we can do I can do it next time, but what, as soon as possible. Okay. But generally, isn't that how it goes? You don't pay for something until until well, you see it. <laughs> Those some the gypsies just take it. The gypsies, <laughs> hey, I got a discount because I argued with the gypsy, so I had to have a credit. Okay. <laughs> that's why I didn't cut it. But I just thought <laughs> we should wait. And they don't be. This is a mass produced. They don't do the production until they know you. Really That's want right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you're saying, that I mean, I could have done that. You're right. I mean, I could. No, have, I, I if just you're just saying that. another check should be written, technically that should be added on here as an amendment to the 
Otherwise, we'll wait until we vote on them again. Well, technically, that's correct. So that would come on the sure cemetery. I might have to do some um, financial um, rearranging to cut a check for the amount of money that we need to do that because the cemetery fund is pretty tight at the moment. <clears throat> Oh. We can what do it on general fund. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right then. So I'll, I'll cut a check. All right. We. we, we I'm going to be. I would like to amend be, this to add to the general fund the amount that is it on your desk? It's being it's, discussed. Um, it's on you know little the little in the corner the little antique thing. Okay. And I think it's right on top of right underneath the 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 something or other. If we have an 1803 system where we have to vote on every item, then let's keep to it. Did you find it? We vote on every item. Technically, that is what's happening. Oh, that's this is this is. Is there a place for the public to, to speak about things that aren't on the agenda? Yes. And, and you can speak on anything that's on the agenda. The thing you say is being recorded. I forget. Um, we have two agendas right now. So we've been talking about it. It might be okay. 4666. 666. Six, six. Six, six, six. Yeah, I know. Do you ever change that? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'll add, yeah. That's $4,666. Yeah. And no cents. No cents. It's being added to the general fund amount. So I make that, I move that amendment. I'll second. Uh, moved and second that general fund contribution would then be 81.99.95. 81. 99.95. I do. Yeah. 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 How old is this? What? <laughs> about, about as old as, about as old as. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second and an adjustment, and we're ready to vote. Please. Mr. Mo Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. And Ms. Moyer. Yes. Thank you. Correspondence is period. Period. Ohio Township Association Legislative Alert for 916. Fall days on the farm in Milford, Ohio. September training reminder. Green County Public Health to offer monkeypox vaccines. Green County ARP Ant Act grant. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that is. Check, check that out. Letter to, letter to uh, Elizabeth and Mark Daly for the zoning inspector about hosting wedding events in, uh, uh, in the township. Notice of public hearing community housing and impact preservation led abatement program. Uh, this is October 6th, 2022. YSDC September 13th meeting minutes. I'll have some chair associations fall maintenance seminar on the 6th of October. Uh, Otara Magazine for this month, past month. Email from Fiscal Officer Silman regarding Power Revised Code 50704. She can bring that up, I guess, in her report. Uh, MVRPC's 2021 annual report. Fund status, revenue status, preparation status for today. Any further correspondence in or out? No, but I didn't see the um, the letter about hosting wedding events. Was that a snail mail legit letter delivered here, or was that okay? That's why I didn't it's see a, it. a copy of a snail mail legit letter delivered here. It's on the table. A point. Yep. Yeah. Correspondence tends to usually be on the correspondence. Yeah, it is, and I, I tend it's to. It's a funny place to keep it, but I tend to look at them all electronically and then miss the ones that. Yeah. Okay, so I guess yeah. that was the end of that. Thank you all. Now, public comment on agenda item. Any member of the public here who would like to make a comment on any item on the agenda? I'd like to make a comment on <clears throat> something that's not on the agenda. What? It's not what it says. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, I just want to say that the sunflower field went very, very well. We had quite a few visitors. Um, my understanding and my observation is that um, there was not any traffic in the cemetery. 
Um, the Sheriff's Department did a fine job there. Great. Um, I would like to, I, I, I do have a question though, as it regards, because we, we intend to assist Tecumseh Land Trust as the chamber, just so that I can be clear for anybody who's on the cam on, you know, listening on the camera or whatever, mm -hmm. going to watch this. Um, we are going to be assisting, we do intend to assist Tecumseh Land Trust in operating it for them again next year. Um, and so that leads me to my next question, which is, uh, the temporary use permit is that how did that go or is that still an open issue it is still an open issue okay um, then I, I will be paying close attention to that because if there's a public hearing on it I will be speaking vociferously against it because of the fact we will be seeking a temporary use permit for that area in order to at least allow us to uh, assist in fundraising by selling t-shirts there, which I know is, is against the uh, present. Um, mm -hmm. Well, if you don't have it uh, already seared in your, in your head, the first public hearing will be at the zoning commission level. Right. And then if it goes past that, it will come to us for a, a, a final public hearing. Okay. But the zoning commission has it. First. Then, okay. So I'm so 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 uh, I'm still safe in doing what I've been doing and becoming Grayson. Oh yes. I'm yes. confused because I thought it was voted down in Green County, and then I didn't know they took further action on that. Green County recommended yeah. recommended right. the um, decline uh, you know, of, of the action to the zoning commission which is mm -hmm. their job. Right. Now, it's up to the Zoning Commission whether they want to follow that advice or not, and either and do anything with it, or just pass it right on to us with their recommendation to, to pass it. And they're recommending it only also. And they, don't, they don't have any veto power. The county doesn't have any veto power over the no. county. Right. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard, just in case you know, the, um, the executive committee of Green County unanimously voted against amending it. So did the, the entire board unanimously recommend. And um, and then I thought Richard came back and said his next move was to have some kind of joint meeting with the zoning commission trustees and BZA. He did say that, but I saw I heard no connection between oh. that and <laughs> the, the the zoning change. Did you? Your connection? I thought it was <clears throat> more generally our concept of zoning and the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I made that assumption because Richard's primary testimony at the hearings were about the zoning commission's, BCA's different views of it. But what you're saying, when you say it's still an open issue, I, I still not. Was something else that's still open, or? Is well, that's true. It may or may not be. I was not at, if it happened, I was not at the, um, this is the September, tomorrow will be the third, third Tuesday in September, which is usually their meeting, usually the Zoning Commission's meeting date and time. So they haven't met since third September in August, and that executive, or yeah, that full commission recommendation from RPCC would, would have been like the 24th, 25th of August. So they haven't met since then. So okay. technically it is open because they haven't decided what to do with it okay. yet. Yeah. And if they meet tomorrow, I would guess that would be on an agenda. But that would be okay. up to the chair. Got it. I'm glad I wasn't the only one that wasn't sure. <laughs> Okay, um, is that all the public comment for agenda items today? That's it. I just okay. wanted I just just wanted to say that that you know it was it was a township area mm -hmm. activity and it went very well. The public loved it. Um, it, it. It was a very fine event for many many children. Many families um, came in and said, you know, we we we've come here every year except the two years that it hasn't been for our family photos and stuff. So they they got two gap years in their galleries, but. Um, but but they were they were extremely 
grateful so that it's not that we brought a continuing thing. I thought it, would, it used to be as long as the flowers were blooming. And for two years they did not plant because of COVID because they right. did not want to attract it. But this year, yes, have they cut the flowers? They have not cut the flowers. I don't know if they intend to harvest or not. But what? But but we we are not we we basically maintain the field for the two high what, while it's in full bloom. It's it's the, the basically the field starts to wilt after two weeks, and so it, it's no longer an attraction. So mainly it was two weekends. Yes. It actually went three weekends because they popped on Labor Day weekend, which was two weeks earlier than, than what the folks that planted it had uh, believed it would. And I believe that that probably was because that field was fallow for two years. And we had a lot of rain. Can I just ask quickly, sorry, I didn't catch this. Are you, are you speaking on behalf of the Tecumseh The Chamber. Trust? Chamber. The chamber. No, the chamber. I know you're the right. chamber, but you're but the chamber. The chamber partnered with the Tecumseh Land Trust okay. to make the to make the the sunflower field happen. Okay. The only reservation that we ever had about it was some problems with people parking virtually everywhere, uh, including both cemeteries at some times, and two massive amounts of um, what I considered people in uh, with young strollers and two or three kids. Big by hand, dragging them across Route 68, you know, and and, uh, and and that's why we hired the sheriff's department to help mm -hmm. take care of that and mitigate that, and it, it, and it went very well. Um, and I, basically, I was saying, you know, the the last meeting that I was here, I, I noted the concerns about um, people parking on graves and that kind of thing that had happened in the past, and so we were sure to make sure we were. We made sure that the sheriff's department was well aware that that was part of their mm -hmm. meeting. Great, excellent. Thank you very much. Welcome. <coughs> Hearing nothing further, let's move to the fire department to report. Alrighty. <coughs> Since the last meeting of the board, there have been 35 EMS incidents, three of which were in Bath Township, and eight fire incidents, two of which were in Bath. Uh, <coughs> medic unit update: Medic 81, the older ones, back in service following its break replacement. However, it's caught is still under repair down in Wilmington, so it's just sitting in the garage. Not really doing anything. <laughs> what, what's the anticipated time, fixed time or anything on the cot? Um, Get it back. We're hoping this week is what the person told me on the phone this afternoon. Uh, they're waiting on parks. Uh, let's see. Public events recently, uh, we've had the crews going to block parties here in the Yellow Springs to say hi and smile. And Are they invited? No. Sorry. <laughs> Private block parties? No, no, the community ones at the I village. No, the village ones. You know. oh, Typically they're done in large cities, but we have to do things like that in a small town because, I don't know, but anyway. Uh, yeah, the guys have been to two or three block parties so far, so. And no one's thrown them out yet, so I guess that's a good thing, so. Uh, just FYI, I'll be burning off some comp time Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. Because um, I didn't want mm -hmm. Margaret told me to burn some off. Uh, Danny and I met with our rep for Med Account Management today for the annual meeting about billing. Um, in a nutshell, everything's <coughs> going well. Our revenue was up $18,000 over the same period last year. Our collection rate is 96.7%, which is outstanding. Um, and they're not recommending any increase in fees uh, that we bill, just because we're, we're right in line with everything else in the, in the area. Um, and as you made very clear, we could raise them to whatever we wanted to, but it doesn't mean anyone's going to pay them. So. <laughs> So that was nice to hear that we're doing really well. Um, and what's the other good thing to told us? So that means we have had more ambulance runs than last year. Uh, a few more, but um, it, it varies based on what type of calls they were, um, because advanced life support calls are billed at a higher rate than, than uh, well, we're, we're making an average um, $331.23 per transfer, uh, which is on the high end. 
you know, we bill up to, I think it's $1,100 is our highest thing, but if it's a Medicare or Medicaid patient, they don't pay anywhere close to that. Our base level is a BLS, which is $600. <coughs> Medicaid pays 90 bucks. So. So, so when the people aren't insured or may not have Medicaid, the ones, are, is that counted in, as, it's counted outside because you didn't even bill them? Or do you bill it? <coughs> Everyone's billed, Everyone's but if they have no, if they are uninsured, they just have to submit a, there's a thing that comes in the bill, and then it's written off. And that's reflected in this 96% amount? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, we, well, um, well. unlike almost anyone else that they deal with, <laughs> we have an, an amazing amount of insured patients in the, in the tension mm -hmm. uh, between private insurance, VA, Medicare, Medicare, which is good for us in terms of revenue. We do work. Well, I recall 49 years ago, something on the, when I hit a bicycling and I hit a pothole and flipped over, uh, and there was, people showed up, EMTs. Uh, I didn't go in the ambulance, but I was billed $13. So, so the oh, prices have gone up. Just a bit. <laughs> um, 49 years ago? Did someone build you? I was going to say, I wonder. They made a pocket of hand themselves. <laughs> oh, I didn't. You may want to go I back and check that. Because uh, we didn't start building until, what, 2008? Yeah. I think that was with the beer fund. <laughs> yeah, it may have been. So a man named Jack Weeble. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're looking good. We're going to start participating in a Medicaid survey program. Um, Medicaid has realized that the rates that they pay are too low. But in typical federal uh, government way, just because they realize it doesn't mean they're going to increase them. So they're doing a survey of like 22,000 providers across the country over a five year period to see just how low they are. With no promise of actually raising the rates at the end, but it's recommended that we do it. Um, and he gave us some, some pointers and feedback um, about some signature collection things that we need to do. And, so it worked out very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then one last thing that I forgot to put on there, uh, because I just pr hit print too fast, I guess. I do have a volunteer application. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, so I've got a resolution here. I'll give it to you, Margaret, but I didn't know what number it was, so it's 2022 dash blank. We can make it 34. Woo! 34. So this is to um, appoint Jackie Anderson uh, to, as a volunteer. She is an EMT, already certified, with experience from, um, she works currently with Clinton Warren Joint Fire District down in Clinton um, County. Mm -hmm. uh, but she is moving to Metro Clifton. So, um, so she'll be here soon. She's come and hung out with us. Um, she is a uh, current employee, Justin Turner's partner. So. Mm -hmm. He's dragging her along with him, so as he moves to Metro Clifton, mm -hmm. to a house that the front of his property is in Clark County, and the back is in Green County, so. <laughs> and all the fun that comes with that. <laughs> so. You say Metro Clifton? What are we? I mean, he lives. They, people would say he lives. He lives in Tanya Road in Clifton, okay. but it's not really in Clifton. Okay. It's just outside. Okay. It's actually Yellow Springs Mailing address there. But. Mm -hmm. okay. So we just refer to it as Metro Clifton. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she is a, a certified EMT and she has years of experience, which is nice. So. Great. Uh, application, I want to take a look at it. I look forward to meeting her in the near future. So we have a motion to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we could do that. Is a motion to approve what? Uh, to appoint. Oh, appointment of Yes, I approve. I move. Did I say we approve? Do you, want to, appointment. do you want to read the resolution or just? I mean, it's the standard appointment of volunteer personnel with uh, four whereas is and now therefore be resolved the above candidate shall be appointed to a volunteer position within the fire rescue department effective September 19th, 2022. Okay, that's resolution 2234. We have a motion. Is there a second? Yes. We now have a second. Thank you very much. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Reacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Let Jackie know that she's 
She's not part of us, whether she likes it or not. <laughs> a warm welcome aboard. <laughs> Would it be appropriate to make reference to the room policy under the fire report? We could do that. Uh, I attempted to print out a revision of the draft that I brought at the last meeting. Uh, that was not able to print it out. Uh, the two changes, well, it's not two anyway, the changes uh, are that we would have a $25 deposit on a key card that whoever's running the room would have to pick up or arrange for access uh, in advance. And then the deposit would be returned uh, in exchange for the card. And if they serve food in the hallway, uh, there'd be a $25 deposit uh, for uh, if they make a mess, if we, if we need to do extra cleaning. Um, what we didn't discuss last time is if there's a group like the Development Corporation or you know, who else that is using this on a serial basis, could we just have a standing deposit just so we let it sit there? Not keep passing a check back and forth. Yeah, that's good. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, well, that's just an update. At some point we can formalize it. Mm -hmm. We have a hard copy. Of is the that like a twenty? Is that are you talking about the twenty-five dollar deposit on the key card, and then would these people keep the key? No, it's just good for one meeting. They'd still have to get a new key. But they would. But we would just keep the money. Yeah. In case they ever lost a card. And does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I just see the way we our accounting system is so Byzantine that it could be a nightmare. <laughs> Is what? The state requirements on all this, each time a check gets passed back and forth, all these votes and everything, just have a standing deposit. <clears throat> if it's not a one-off meeting. We're not there yet, but I could envision a serial user, as you would put them, uh, if, if, if you know, we're fairly well sure that they're going to use it for you know, a year or whatever. I, I have no problem with letting them keep the key card. Um, should we? In general, I see that as the chief's discretion, but we can, I mean, we can get in on all viewpoints. I'm just saying, you know, if we trust them enough to issue them once, once, why wouldn't we? Continually trust them to do it. I mean, we can always deactivate a key card or anything, mm -hmm. so that's easy. Mm -hmm. they can, then he says he can set it to open any door here, which we just in front of them, say, but, And we have cameras in the lobby, so if anything crazy happens, we can mm -hmm. use the So that's just a thought. I mean, you know, you can think about when you put the final touches yeah. on this. And primarily, the wording on the public document that we make available to people is what I'm concerned about. We don't have to vote on all the other things uh, as they change around. What? Um, uh, well, well, what we were just saying, mm -hmm. it might develop that someone would have a card that was set up for more than one session. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that we would need to vote on that. No, I mean, if we make that understood at the beginning of the whole process mm -hmm. that serial users could be entitled to uh, continuing key card, but again, we can just knock that stuff out. In the okay, way. well, you'll, <laughs> if I master my computer, you'll have a printed copy next meeting. That would be great. I won't hold my breath if it doesn't happen. <laughs> we'll live. Okay. Anything else? One last thing, just cut the seed and we'll discuss mm -hmm. it on a future day. But currently, we've we've had a policy for shoot twenty, shoot, 20 years 
plus to um, pay for members, EMT, and paramedic courses in mm -hmm. return for a service contract. Mm -hmm. um, current rates for paramedic are now up at $10,000 for the program. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... This is the training program. Yeah, through Clarksville. But Anne Sinclair is very similar in price. So I mean, it's something we're, I, mean, I think we'll want to look at going forward. We don't pay for everybody. Um, you know, there's a process we have internally for them to request to be sponsored. We have several people who want now to go to class um, so they can qualify for higher pay rates, mm -hmm. which, which is great, but I, I just don't, I mean, that's a lot of money for us to, to expend. And there's three people who want to go next year. You know, so it's like $30,000. It's more than the training budget we've ever had. <laughs> Uh, I never would have thought we'd been in a situation of yeah. turning down people who want to get I know. trained for paramedic. But we've got one person currently in class who started this semester, Jake Rich. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's been deregistered three times because Clark State can't figure out how to bill third party entities, which mm -hmm. seems surprising since the community college doesn't have time, but, mm -hmm. um, but he's still in class. Uh, TJ Freeze is finishing his class in December. I don't know if we paid for anything for him yet, but <laughs> I'm not going to bring that up. But, um, so that's just something for us to think going forward. And that's, so currently we pay the fees? Yeah, we paid the entire thing. They signed for a paramedic class, they signed a contract to give us two years of service after they pass. And if they don't pass, they owe us the money back. Because uh, a lot of these people can't. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money to put out. Uh, Justin Turner passed class. He took it at the same time as Georgia. But she got in first, so she got us to pay for her. Justin ended up paying for it himself. Uh, at the time, you know, we had asked about reimbursement afterwards. I thought we'd done that in the past, but it's really a case-by-case -case thing. There's no policy about it. So he's giving me his invoice now, because now they want to pay back. So I said, can you guys help? So I have someone who can see them. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, it's just something to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah, we like to do it, obviously. Yeah, it's a good recruiting retention tool, but it's a little bit different when it was $4,500. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I agree. 10000 so, I mean, okay, nothing gets cheaper, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. EMT class is the same thing. It's, at Clark State, it's almost $1,800 for EMT class. Mm -hmm. You know, we try and put people in premier health class for 750 bucks. Uh, that's in Troy. Mm -hmm. so that's that issue yeah. for people in you know, Troy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll just like that. But just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any comments? Tom? Carolyn? Um, I don't have any. I mean, 30,000 is a lot for. Next year, but we don't know how much money we're going to have next year. Correct. <laughs> we work on it. Do you have any um, uh, levy updates? You, I think you said you now have leadership in the, the committee, and yes, the signs or association has. Um, <laughs> cajoled, convinced uh, Georgia Goad and Justin Turner to be co-chairs of the levy committee, which was something they were needing. And they're supposed to be working on getting signs ordered, or have ordered them. I'll have to follow up because I haven't seen the latest update on that. And potential support letters or or le uh, support signatures or something? Uh, Dan and I have provided them, the association, with um, a listing of residents, township, Clifton, and Yellow Springs residents who have traditionally been supportive, but advise them that they would need to contact them, obviously, and see if they, still <laughs> mm. <laughs> if they still support us, and if so, would they be willing to, uh, for some of them, you know, write a letter or also serve on the levy committee mm -hmm. to get a little more Okay, cool. Those signs can go up 30 days before the election, right? Correct, in the townships. 
I don't know what yellow spine is. Well, 365 days. Oh, there are signs up in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, signs there are still, still signs for Obama. Obama. <laughs> Are there signs for the selection all right? Oh, yeah, there's some. Oh, sure. Nan Whaley's all over the place. Oh. They're not all well, over the place. But. There was a court ruling years ago that freedom of speech mm -hmm. allows you, as long as it's on your property, oh, any sign. It, 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 I might and then let you pass yes. on a word of advice to them. Please. All of my vendors are have extended their, their yard sign uh, delivery dates by three weeks. Oh, Shazam. I know that because I just tried to get them for that. <laughs> okay. I will pass it on when I'm off duty later today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I knew you would. <laughs> Do they know we have a number now, issue 18? Yes, Jeremy was very excited uh, to report that we have an issue number. Is real? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on that list, right? You are, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I think the Board of Election just sent out a revised issue number uh, oh. list. Uh, like last week. Check that. It went from 18 to 25. Oh. Okay. In I fact, wasn't it in the correspondence? Uh, I didn't. Well, what's the sign for <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing it. Before we have a call out for Belmont. They changed the left hand side. That's the one for issue 18. Oh, oh, cross it out. Think. Oh. It says, it, says it says 18 on here. It says 18 on there? Yeah. I looked, okay. Yeah, I looked at a list online that said 18. Okay, cool. It, it worries me that you you thought there was a revision in it, though. I could, I could make that call tomorrow. Oh, it should be card on their website. Yeah, it okay. should be. So we'll check that. Yeah. Double check that, I guess. Okay. Uh, the only thing I had was I had just got some recent information about uh, this potential purchase of a of a medic that we need in the next ten years, um, which seems like never ending. Uh, I won't politicize anymore. But, um, chassis are not available until uh, order for order until after October one, and the beds are whether they're available or not. I have no idea, but we got a price for the bed of about. Uh, $250,000 for that. So add that to $80,000 plus for the chassis, uh, or maybe more than that. I don't know how much additional, but I mean, we talked about three fifty, dollars but we never thought it was going to go that high. But when you think, what, six years ago, the last one we was $195,000. Mm -hmm. And it's the exact same. I mean, mm -hmm. not exact, but mm -hmm. pretty, pretty much the <laughs> exact same annual. So. Yeah. What you're calling a medic with a bed and that's an ambulance. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, something to look forward to. <laughs> I know a department that recently purchased a, a fire engine. And they were going to get a demo unit. Mm -hmm. um, and it was $880,000. Just nothing special. Just a, you know, a fire engine with just the normal stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. Not an aerial, not a rescue, just mm -hmm. not even a quid. Hmm. Nope. Nothing. Nothing's, I can't even imagine. Well, I've seen ladder prices. So. Departments are paying one and a half, one point eight million for a ladder truck. Good lord. Really? Don't get me started on fireworks. No, that's <laughs> not. Okay, moving right along. Oh. Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, Are we moving on from the fi fire department? Uh, unless you have something additional. I was wondering if this would be a good time to talk about the joint meeting. And Collins looks like he's getting up his stuff. Oh, no. I'm just oh. Or, or if you want to keep, leave it till later. Because I no, may sure. all be making assumptions about the joint meeting. Well, Are there I'm assuming the joint meeting is not just our levy. It's on public services in general. Cost of public services in general. I was... I was more wondering, we have an agenda that they sent out that, that we're supposed to get feedback on. Did anybody? Did you see they sent out a? I have not seen it. I haven't seen it. Oh, oh, that they want co comment from us. Did, where did I get this well, from? I think I got it from our email. Are you about I know school June board? said she was going to send one out. I think it's a, that the three village council, school board, and, and the trustees. Yeah. Let, 
Uh, I suggest that we have, make this a separate agenda item later in the meeting. Okay. That, that's fine. I had imagined that Colin was going to be our presenter, but I, I wasn't sure if that was just an assumption oh. I made. It, it is Colin leaving sure. before? No, Colin's no. okay. He'll be here through the meeting. Okay, cool. Okay. And I can wait. We've got 26 minutes of my time. I'll hurry then. Okay. So we shall move on. We shall. We'll move on to Cemetery Road. Um, as we know, our sexton's not here. A couple of different things um, that I've picked up since he left. Uh, I did take a look at the roads yesterday. Uh, everything as I expected them to be, everything looked in very good order. Uh, some minor things here and there, but that's nothing that won't uh, wait for their return, his return, I should say. Um, as you recall, we had cemetery stone restoration work done over the past week. Uh, by my count, I believe this was the third time they spent a week in the cemetery doing stone work. Um, they did an awful lot of work this past week, uh, a lot more than I thought they did the last time, because I was not that happy the last time. But this time they really cranked it up and, and uh, we are almost, uh, I don't think there's enough work to bring them back again from you know, the way things look. I mean, in the old section, broken monuments, you know, things are tipped over, that sort of thing. There's just really not that much left. Is this and so, just in Clifton Cemetery or is it both cemeteries? This is only Glen Forest. Oh, okay. Uh, they've been in Clifton one time, I believe. Well, we could use them again on Clifton, but that's a separate yeah. entity. Um, so, they have, uh, which is what they usually do, they have marked with a, um, with a caution tape or some, some sort of fluorescent tape, they've marked the stones that they've worked on. If people want to go around and see the work they've done. They've done. Uh, a lot of times it's not quite as obvious because it's picking a monument either up that's in a couple of pieces and putting it back together. So unless you knew it was down, you wouldn't know it was back together. Uh, or it was it was broken and 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 then put back together. Uh, the ones that are the more obvious are the, are the small flat stones that, that stick up that tend to break in half either by themselves or with help. Um, I'm just in the wind and lawnmowers and things like that. Um, but they generally will, will clean those up and clean the surfaces and make them whiter and brighter. Uh, and you know, and then put them back together with uh, special epoxy and mats and, and magical dust and stuff like that. And they do a wonderful job, I think. Uh, always have. So take take a look at it sometime in the next whenever, and then we'll take the ribbons off of them and let them go back to. And you send us an invoice, please. I guess. Oh. I don't see anything. Usually, they're Johnny on the spot at the door when they leave town. So, the cemetery is responsible for keeping those intact forever? No, we're not, we are not responsible, but we do it. Oh. I, I want to make perfectly clear those stones are uh, only the property of the, the grave owner, the person who. who uh, we purchase them. We do it because we want our cemeteries to look nice. And since they're within our, you know, <coughs> our township, within our property, you know, we, we have felt the responsibility to, to try and keep them okay. as best we can, you know, with the money that we have. Yeah. That's good. So that's basically, that's, I think that's all I have. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going through slowly in the, the new Oak Grove section and putting in um, pins uh, with, with, with uh, round, four and a half inch round stainless steel discs that get pinned in all four corners of, the, of where the graves lot, the grave, in the lots where the grave will be, graves will be, yeah. So then when the time comes, it's relatively easy just to measure from that pin out to however many graves this person owns and, and we need to open. So 
that, that'll be the extent of it, is just those four corners, not the, not the total amounts of the graves. Uh, like the olden days, they used to be that way. But we're pretty high tech now with metal detectors. So that's all for that. Anything <coughs> from the Road Cemetery? Not for me. Parts? No. You want to say anything about the woman who came from? Well, sure, if that's the time to do it, because yeah. I'm going to do business. But um, or cemeteries. all three of us were um, mm -hmm. at a really nice little meeting on a beautiful morning. It was not a meeting. It wasn't a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tour. It was a tour led by of our own cemetery, led by um, um, Grace Deach from Metro, Five Rivers Metro Parks. And then there was another prairie expert there. Um, Rose, Jennifer Rosengarten, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, Kim Iconis, who does the, looks after the prairie at Glass Farm for Take Up the Land Trust. And what I got from it was um, that we're in great shape. She really liked our, our prairie. Very um, complimentary. Very complimentary, and gave us many pieces of advice mm -hmm. and, and, and direction. But she said that she, um, there are some that she oversees um, and maintains that she works very hard at that don't look as good as ours. So that was nice to hear. And mainly, she's, she, what, one of the things I got was we should be collecting seed of what we want as it's seeding and um, saving it and putting it over like fresh graves or areas that where we're trying to um, discourage things like ragweed. And, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of connection this, the other person there, Jennifer, is it Rosenstein? Rosengarten. Rosengarten, I said it right the first time. Um, she has a lot of, um, she's like a seed bank. She has a lot of things growing in her, her yard that she has offered to um, give us um, plants that um, Grace recommended. Um, and, Chris. and she concurred that everybody who is in this field now uses herbicides, a judicious use of herbicides. And um, Kim Iconis, who is there, who is from Tacoma Land Trust, she's really kind of perfected for each plant the percentage and mm -hmm. the, the, the type of chemical and the, and the percentage that, that is really effective. So she's a good uh, um, resource to, she said it's a waste of time to not have the correct dose. Um, overseeding, blah, blah, blah. It was just interesting. She told us a lot about the little microclimates, like why one side looks different than another and what's happening there. How about anybody else, Steve? Any uh, observations? I recall some bad news for the fire department, and maybe some good news too, but uh, she does, uh, Grace does not recommend uh, burning again for a few years. Uh, she thinks it's, it's in a good spot to Oh, the guys are out there burning. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's not a funny uh, joke. <laughs> no problem. Just tell us what you want to. Okay. Well, we'll yeah. Need, but oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, cool. and our I, I, we had a original maintenance plan that said four to five years, and we were right on. So, and then um, it used to be half at a time was the best recommendation, and now the best recommendation is a third at a time. But, um, yeah. And 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 uh, I guess it was from the Glass Farm project uh, said they would love to have their sections burned, but they were concerned, I don't know if you've ever had any conversation with these people, concerned that they were too close to housing, houses. Like the Glass Farm? Yeah. Maybe we have to take a look. But I said, you, know, you never know until you call them and ask them, so you yeah. may get that call. Cool. Very excited about the possibility because this Jennifer Rosengarten had been agitating Kim for a few years to, to burn, and she, I guess she didn't realize that we had the expertise to do that. We're an expert, but it's expertise just mm -hmm. one. No. <laughs> kidding, <laughs> kidding. The house is probably going to burn. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's okay. okay, thank you for that. Petition to report. If nothing further, we'll slide right into the fiscal officer report. We have a resolution. Uh, resolution 2022-33. 20, 
and then the Department of Appropriations, mm -hmm. whereas an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to needs in Township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations and general fund increased telephone by 2100 and the fire fund increased training by 4,000, uh, re increased repairs and maintenance by 2,500, and increased telephone by not 42,500. <laughs> wow. Okay. You know, okay. that, you know, that's the, the, uh, the four has the dollar sign on top of it, and then, you know, I didn't do the shit thing. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so it's 2,500. Yes, yeah. <laughs> And, um, and contractor services uh, increased by 500, and then um, buildings increased by 200. The Miami Township Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Do I hear a motion to approve Resolution 2233? I so move. I second. A motion. There's a motion and a second for discussion regarding this resolution. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. And um, I did um, email you guys. Um, you read it? Yeah. Um, uh, basically, um, it came to my attention. Oh, I don't have the email in front of me, but anyway, it has come to my attention that that um, uh, my responsibilities as fiscal officer does not um, require me to be at every meeting and only one meeting per quarter. And I don't know how long it's been going on, but this is the first I've heard of it. And, and um, so that, um, that lack of requirement would be nice to not have to be here at every meeting, because I've done it for 20 plus years and taking the minutes and There was something I'm just asking you to consider, um, relieving me of that part of my, what, the duties that I have performed over 20 plus years. Um, and I realize it would require someone to be hired to sit and take the minutes like the zoning commission does. Um, they have someone who takes the minutes and presents them. What do we pay? I think um, Charles Sweeney gets $100 per minute. $100 per set of minutes. Right. And, um, but they don't meet as much as you know, the trustees do. So um, <clears throat> I just try to throw it out there just for consideration. Um, you know, I, can't, I can't just up and quit. I'm not going to do that, right? Because that's not right. Anyway. Is this something for you guys to think about or consider? Well, I, <clears throat> I think I'm the one who pointed this out to you. Uh, not having you at the meeting, you would sort of be out of the loop. But the work of doing the minutes is definitely a significant task. Um, I'm not sure what loop I'd be out of. I mean, paying all the bills um, pretty much keeps me in the loop of what's going on, <laughs> for sure. Um, like, um, Colin does what he does, and, um, you know, it doesn't affect my job performance as far as being a fiscal officer. I mean, we chat, and, you know, we take care of business when we, you know, but, and Dan doesn't need me to know what he's doing. I don't tell him to do. Anyway, I just, uh, I just wanted to bring it up for you to think about. I don't expect an immediate um, decision, because I understand that you, know, you have to find somebody just to take a minute. So that's all. Anything else? Um, I, yes. I, I just question, do we even, given that it's part of the Ohio Advice Code, do we even have the, is it even our decision? I mean, no, it is not. It's not our decision. No, 100% yours. And the second thing is, 
I hear you. I'm afraid something's going to fall through the loops somewhere, but I mean, not fall through the loops, I'm mixing my metaphors. Um, something's going cracks. to fall through the cracks. Thank you. But maybe not. I don't know. I'm here. I'm here, you know, for yeah. regularly, and um, well, that's, I do my that's, at, do the that's at home. Actually, that's not true that you're here regularly. I mean, you're here a lot, but not. A, I don't have hours. Not, you don't have hours, so yeah. But I so, am available. I feel like I am available. You know, right. I just um, yeah, I don't have regular hours. So I, the silence is. Okay. Yeah. I will talk to some of the other townships and ask what they do. Just for our information. They have managers and things. Most most townships don't have a man don't have an administrator. Mm -hmm. Some do. Xenia does. I guess you would agree that. Yeah. But most townships are smaller than us, believe it or not. Zine township's pretty big, isn't it? No, I mean statewide. Oh. <coughs> I mean, I don't, you know, this is nothing personal. So, just kind of be happy not have to do anything. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's move on. Unless somebody has something else they want to say. It's just thought, please. All right, well, we have no zoning inspector's report for the evening. It's uh, second meeting, so we'll move the standing committee reports. Uh, and we are PC. Again, we don't have an executive committee member anymore, but we do have board of directors member. Um, Carolyn, do you have anything to say about well, last meeting? I just want to say that they did several transportation things that I'm trying to understand they're, they're, they're complicated and I never know whether which ones if any apply to us more many of their big transportation things I can't tell mm -hmm. whether they yeah. apply to us. Yeah. The one thing that stands out because Denny Powell had, had mentioned it I think to me and you was um, there's you know the big 1.5 million dollars they're putting aside for electric vehicle chargers that as I understand it jurisdictions can apply for funds is that how you understand uh, it? I haven't seen that come by me, me yet. Oh, well, they approved at that meeting to um, set aside $1.5 million for electric charging stations that their jurisdictions, I believe, can apply for. I, I can get more information than, you know, just thought I'd put it out there since you guys brought it up. Or, I don't know if you guys, this the system chief. Um, I know that there's issues with that, whether we want to be paying for the electric bill or chargers, but I'll let you know that second. I guess that's coming from the, uh, possibly from the infrastructure money from the federal government. Um, that's all about NBRPC. Yeah, that is. I mean, there's billions of dollars in the infrastructure bill for electric vehicle charging stations yeah. in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, to, to the point, the money is there to install the charging stations. That does not mean that the township would be paying for the electricity to those charging stations. Those charging stations are not free. Oh, okay. um, you, you, you have um, electric vehicle owners have apps on their phones in which they, in which they activate their charging station and then they are charged for, for whatever electricity they use. And so actually, it is actually a potential um, income stream as opposed to a, a, a cost. For the electric company or for, for the township? For the township. Well, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> the only downside I would see to I mean, you know, electric vehicles in the way of the future, unless we have a two ton shift in the government, which God knows. Um, I mean, like the Bryan Center has what three or four charging stations down there, but they also have you know, 100 parking spaces. <laughs> we're a little slim, so we're very slim. Uh, we could put it in a cemetery. 
Charge your vehicle while you visit your dearly departed. I mean, that would be different. Um, pull those columbariums out and put them somewhere else. We had a nice flat pad there that people can just pull right up on. I was being facetious when I. There's an electric pole right there behind it. Yeah, that's, that's so crazy, it might just work. But when Denny talked to me, he saw it as a, a, a kind of an employee. It would be attractive to employees. Yeah, I mean, I know I've got a couple guys. I've got one guy with an EV right now and a couple who are looking at buying EV. It's on the range, I guess. So, would it have to be in the coal public? burning car by you, myself. But would it have to be in the public parking area, though? Or could it be no, I mean, we could put it anywhere. Yeah. Well, you could put Where? it in this parking lot right here, which wouldn't accommodate either employees or the public because it's a township parking lot. It's, it's which parking lot? I'm sorry. This one right here, right where we park right now. I mean, if we had just one space, there. I could see that. Yeah. Well, what's, it doesn't take away parking to have a charging station, does it? So Are you allowed to park there if you're not charging? Typically, that's I don't know that that's a requirement, but typically they do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll look into see how you apply for it, just in case we decided mm -hmm. you would bring down the wrath of somebody in the village if, if you did not reserve it for another. <laughs> we're, we're bringing down the wrath of somebody in the village, regardless. Every day. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just saying we're a wrathful village. That's what we do here. Look at, them all, look at them all out there. Right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I saw some of the slings and arrows too, guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. Margaret, I'd like to, not Margaret, Marilyn, I'd like to quote you. You just said we are a wrathful village. No. I don't really mean that. Well, it's on the film. Okay. <laughs> but we don't, but we don't have the issues for yes, we here today. Last month. We're, we're, we're moving we'll on. We'll meet again Lawyer? tomorrow in the executive Lawyer. session. The, <laughs> really, the, the, the major believe it or not, the major uh, item on the agenda was the, uh, um, the recommendation or the den recommendation for denial of the exemption for zoning code uses. In not, not ours. Yes, ours. Okay. That well, was why was it on the agenda again? Oh, the one you're just reporting back. From. This is from last yeah. month. It's not on the agenda anymore. Right. This is what we saw. This is a, a month ago yesterday, or a month ago yeah. tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Clifton <coughs> Cemetery, anything going on? It's all quiet. Uh, <coughs> we postponed the meeting because the uh, expected new member uh, had COVID. Yeah. We have not rescheduled. But you did mention that maybe there's a, a fourth person that is interested as an alternative. Is that still? We will be discussing on? adding a, a, an alternative, but that's not as pressing as it was. Well, going down the list, we now Yellow Springs Development Corporation. And you had said you want to talk about the visioning workshop you had. <clears throat> uh, the. Ten, ten of the members, ten people, including both voting and ex officio uh, members of the YSDC board, had a five hour workshop now almost a month ago. Was that the retreat you were talking about? Yeah, it was a retreat on a Sunday. Uh, but it was, so it was a kind of a demonstration of the ARIA uh, visioning process, uh, the ARIA associates or whatever they're called. Um, That's the but it doesn't, there's no sort of business outcome from it. Uh, in a lot of ways, where everyone spoke of it personally as very meaningful. Um, just listening to each other's stories and talking and expression of what values they thought uh, should be involved in the village's future, but they, we were speaking as individuals. 
then when we got at our last meeting, talked about the proposal of uh, retaining the ARIA associates to uh, do this over a two-year period, village-wide, uh, discussion stalled. Uh, YSTC is, you know, the focus is economic development, whereas village visioning is much broader than that. And so, are we the right sponsors for this? And uh, the decisions that we face are often immediate short-term things, like selling a firehouse or when we were going to take on supervision of, or oversight of the wellness center. Uh, so there's no conclusion from that. It's to be continued. Uh, so when you say ARIA, that, isn't that Jay Ruffman's um, group when you're talking right. about the process they designed for the community process? Right. And the goal of it, does it overarching goal? Just visioning for the Yellow Springs future or township future? Or, or whatever entity they're contracted with, yes. Hmm. I mean, they've done it with other organizations in the past, not recently. Other entities in the past. Did YSDC get a grant for this, or is this going to come out of their funds? All of this. We have not gotten a grant, but the discussion is assuming that we get a grant. At least from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? No. Any further comment about that, Marilyn? No. Um, last but not least, the CASP, Climate Action and Sustainability Project. Um, there's a lot discussed, nothing I really need to report out on. Okay. That was easy. Yeah. Um, down to item 11, new business, we have discussed the first two pieces on that, um, <coughs> on that item, so we'll Take it down to the Green County Natural Gas Aggregation on November 8th ballot. Yeah. Hearing update. Ballot uh, hearing update. No, Broadband. Uh, let's try that again. It's, they're not, they're separate. Two different things. things. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I had no idea until I went to the Green, the Green County Township Associating Dinner, mm -hmm. catered by Christopher. That was a good one. Um, that that our unincorporated residents have a ballot issue, mm -hmm. and um, like they did maybe in 2014 or yeah, um, where they the county contracted with uh, what's this Palmer Energy to be a electrical supplier. They want to also contract with them to be a natural gas supplier and try to bring down the rates. Um, the, at the meeting, um, it was assumed and said that it um, that the electrical aggregation really did help people out in the township. I, I don't know. I, that wasn't verified at all. They just spoke as if, of course, we want to help get the prices down. Um, people would have the option, if it's passed, you have the option to opt out. And um, they would, if they're already doing an alternative supplier to center point, I guess, um, they have to wait till their contract's up, but then are automatically opted in unless they say otherwise. They asked us to make our constituents aware of this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how we would do that. This is one way. So this yeah. is one way. So um, I guess there, for we some, have a couple of Facebook uh, routes. Yeah. As I see it, there's. There's no harm in voting for it because if it passes, you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can opt out. Um, so that's all. I think that's one of the things that really, for whatever reason, killed this the last time it was on the ballot. I think it was two years ago or maybe longer. Um, 
people just didn't understand that they could opt out, that they had any choice, they thought it was being forced on them, even though it was in black and white, it was you know, one third the price of the kilowatt hour, I think, or oh, not gas, or not gas, but it was cubic feet. But it went down in flames. Um, really, so this has been proposed before? Yeah. Oh, okay. But the kilowatt hour, the electric, Aggregation did go through. Yeah, and that was a, that was a long time ago, and I, I, I mean, I was part of it. I didn't feel like there was that much better community outreach, and but uh, it it passed fairly fairly easily. I just don't see why anybody would be against it unless. I don't know either. Given the, their ability to opt out, unless it affects them, their market rate somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, even without the aggregation, you have the option to choose your supplier. Right. Sure. So yeah, this would give you another option that might be lower. Because the idea is by aggregating, you can drive as a group drive the price yeah. lower. Okay. So. Hard to be against that, but I'm missing the vote. So we get everybody's ideas on how to inform our roughly, I don't know how many voters we have in the unincorporated area. Um, oh, we got a bunch. Is there about 2,000 people, but now that they're not all voters? Mm -hmm. About 1,700. Mm -hmm. used to be, now it goes with all this. Close to 1,000 voters in new housing. Okay. Um, that's all I had to say about that. Okay. Um, Last item is uh, a hearing update on broadband in the township. Hearing update. Um, who wrote that? <laughs> no, I that that's, that's, that's now. I just and if there's, there's, if there is any, um, I don't think there. I actually don't think there's any update. I think it's it'll take it'll be as slow as molasses. It's happening on the other. Side, it's, it's starting on the other side of the county and we'll be near the end. And mm -hmm. probably not we'll be 25. Safe. Well, and the village has authorized running through the village. See them out there now, putting stuff up. Yeah, and there was a lot of small talk at the um, Green County T Township Association about what everybody's doing about the permit process, which we discussed last mm -hmm. week. Which, but, but Green County is a different. Um, will have a different provider than the incorporated village. Mm -hmm. Right. So I believe it's AT&T. Mm -hmm. That's what the, uh, the, the uh, county uh, commissioners decided. You no, know, it's, uh, it's Alta Fiber. It used to be Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bell. Bell. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I always I always equate Cincinnati Bell and AT&T to this day. So yeah. But well, there is ongoing discussion between Cincinnati Bell and the village, I'm told. That's what they said at the meeting. It was not a discussion. I, I, can, I, w I, I am very happy to invite anyone who wants. I will send you the invitation to the meeting tomorrow at noon that the chamber is sponsoring on the fiber project, mm -hmm. in which we've got all the experts on that. And I very highly doubt that we will be doing anything with uh, Cincinnati. Do our constituents generally know that this is going to this happen? Because there's no there's no news press about this. It's only meetings. There, there looked was for some very brief, but it, yeah. it, it was. Well, there gonna, will be by the time that it comes yeah. because when that now. when that time comes that service is going to be in 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 a particular area, yeah. they will they will go door to door and put yeah. door hangers on. Yeah. They'll also put yard signs in. Yeah. I, was, I just want to tell them the good news, that's all. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know. No, I agree. Uh, it's going to be, the way it's structured right now, it's going to be for residential areas, and you will be uh, you'll be hooked up right into your cable box or whatever. I, don't know. I have no idea right this second, but yeah. it would be fifty nine ninety five a month for, mm -hmm. I think, 300 megabyte downloads, and I'm not sure what the uploads are. Um, they are, they are a, a, equipped to carry as much as 10, 10 gigabytes. No, it would be three gigabytes, I'm sorry, not megabytes. They're equipped to provide 10 to residential homes when they get it up, up, up and running. And 
you know, you don't go to there until Spectrum takes theirs from now the 200 or 300 what they're doing to now 500 for the same amount of money or less, or you know, they keep going up. So they'll they they understand they're going to have to you know be competitive. That's one of the reasons that they decided to go ahead and offer all the incorporated areas. I think I said this is last meeting. I'm repeating myself. All the incorporated areas in the county um, to to hook up all of those residents at no charge uh, for the for the county or for the municipalities because that gives them an additional pot to to, to make money off of. Uh, that interesting. Yeah, interesting. Well, it's going in a different direction, but. You know. Okay. To, to give you an idea, the the, um, the program that Yellow Springs is instituting will save my business um, four hundred dollars a month compared to Spectrum. Um, the and in the price you just quoted for three hundred megabytes is a, is actually a gig for the village of Yellow I meant I meant I'm sorry I meant three megabytes. No, that's not right. Three hundred megabytes. And yeah. Is it three hundred? Yeah, yeah, it is three hundred megabit. Right yeah. now, that's what it is. Right that's now, the, yeah. That's for, for Spectrum, and so I would see, say that that's probably the equivalent there. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that the village of Yellow Springs is going to be one gigabyte up and down. Um, there, there's no, unlike the present system, there is no disparity between your upload and download speeds. And there's no, there's no, there's no price levels there. You, there are two price levels. Mm -hmm. There's one for three for 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 three hundred megabytes. I believe that's somewhere down around thirty dollars a month, and then the seventy dollars a month is um, is the is the, the gigabyte up and down. Well, I'm in the pilot program for that. Excellent. Thank you. I was too. You know I've never heard anything about it. <laughs> Uh, are you also? Uh, I signed up for it, but I never heard of it. the guy came to your house? The guy came to our house? They, 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 they're doing it in stages right now. The contractors um, that had been hired by, by MVECA to, um, to complete the last mile um, connections are extremely behind. Um, but I do know that they're, they're, running to, they're running to the businesses and the businesses right now. There's their start. So, and, we, and we've had our meeting tomorrow is at noon? At noon, virtually. Where? On Zoom. Oh. Virtually. On Zoom. In the world wide web. That's where it is. It's everywhere. Okay, thank you all. Did you have any solar farm? Any. Uh, Kingwood. Uh, yeah. Kingwood. Talk. It's still pending at the Power Siding Board, but. Uh, I think at the prior to the last meeting. Anyway, t tomorrow night, Cedarville uh, Township is having a meeting for Cedarville Township uh, residents, but we are invited if you want mm -hmm. uh, to review future uh, how solar might fit with their township zoning in the future, because there are companies starting all over again, going around trying to get leases in their township. Oh, really? And I'm yeah. imagining that's happening here, yeah. although I haven't heard about it. Krista McGraw, when she was here, warned us of that, that there are people around and that. I, what I want to learn more about is how the, what was the name of the law that was passed right after Kingwood came in? Um, uh, House Bill 52. And I, that, I don't understand House Bill 52. I need to study it. And well, basically it says, it empowers uh, the county commissioners to declare zones that are off limits. They don't use the term zone, so but the areas that are so off So it doesn't limits. affect our, our zoning powers? Well, it, it could override it. Also gives yeah. local, local political subdivisions the power of referendum. Oh, you're right. Okay. On the project. Yes. Are you saying that the Kingwood project has been denied? No, it, it's it hasn't been still, okay. still pending with the Ohio Power Siding Board. So it gives local um, jurisdictions referendum, meaning if we could put it on the ballot, mm -hmm. that's significant. Oh yeah. 
because Krista said there are people still that 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 will be increasing. I, I I'll talk. I want to talk to her about that too. But she knows. All right. So we were going to talk about the joint meeting. Oh, let's talk about the joint meeting. I. Uh, this uh, agenda. You know, just the structure of it, <clears throat> 15 minutes for each of the school board, township, and council to talk about priorities, current proposed projects, and taxing strategies, uh, and then stuff about cost of living implications and future collaborative uh, work. On the face of it, it looks good, but what's the content? And what's our 15 minutes going to be? And who, who among us is going to present our 15 minutes? Bearing in mind that it's a public, it's a, it's a uh, public hearing. Mm -hmm. When you say hearing, it's a public meeting. Yeah. Yes. Right. But yeah, it, hearing implies that there's something being. No, it, it, what I was implying as opposed to it just simply being a meeting, there will be an opportunity for public input. Mm -hmm. But yes, there's no adjudication. And it has a two-hour limit. Sort of. <laughs> that is, what are township priorities, current proposed projects, we have a levy, and taxing strategies, we have much narrower choices than uh, the school and village in terms of taxes. And who's going to, separate from who's going to present, who's going to work on the content? I do believe I saw um, also asking for. PowerPoint. PowerPoint by Friday? <coughs> uh, I missed. What was this? Where did I read that? Is there an the email? The value of the email, I think. Mm -hmm. Came to trustees. Yeah. Yeah. I'll read that. So, um, yeah, this was the attachment. I'd be willing to work on this, but I think everyone should sort of vet the PowerPoint. And I'd be happy if I didn't be the one who did it, or if I wasn't the one. And I would assume Colin would be, I mean, he's key in this, but we do have other things we tax for. Priorities are fairly self-explanatory, in my opinion. Current proposed projects, we have a current. Um, we do not have a proposed project for anything that I can think of. Uh, What's the current, 11? Yeah. And taxing strategies, I'm, it's, I'm sorry, property tax. <laughs> <laughs> you got me on that one. Oh, to help them understand we have our um, standing levy in this one. Well, I hope they're smart enough to know that. <coughs> but most people don't, don't know about inside levy, inside millage, outside millage. And we're talking about amounts, dollar amounts, even though we refer to it in terms of Levy rates, the levy rates change, and the dollar the levy rates with inflation drop as the dollar amount is frozen. People don't know that. This cost of living piece is that going to be a yeah a key group thing? I mean, presentation from them, you. We haven't heard of that. 
uh, well, where's this data coming from? Marilyn, do you, have you heard about that? No. Who sent this out? I think we Judy Kittner. Okay. I think from Brian Hunch. Um, just an aside, I, I wouldn't look at the levy as a pro proposed project. No, it's a current project. Is it a project? Is it the texting strip? I mean, I thought like a proposed project would be like a new fire station, right? Yeah, we can define it any way we want. A project is a project that um, Wages are, wage, wages are going up in um, a new unit. Hmm? A new unit. A new a new a new medic. That would be I think that would be what they would define as a project. That's something you're going to spend. Yeah, new money. projects to oh, em emphasize our, the We want to maintain our services. And they're they've been transmuting from primarily volunteer to primarily professional. That's costing money. And wages are going up and the costs of things like ambulances and fire trucks are through the roof. And the number of calls is escalating. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Well today is the 19th. We have 10 days. Well we got 23 days. We have until Friday to send them our uh, so I, I, our PowerPoint. Because I've been a part of some of those other meetings. If I can offer some clarity. Please. The projects are, what are you bringing to the table that you're asking money for? What is coming up? What is, what is it that, you know, in the schools, it's the projects that are coming up is, is rehabbing the school buildings and maybe in the future again trying for new school buildings. For the village, it may be you know it, it's it's the, the the infrastructure work that's being done. For the township, you would be looking at things like, um, and specific to specific to the three you know being in concert with the three taxing entities and their interests um, would be it would be the the um, increase of service levels for the fire department and that type of thing. Increase because that they're going services. to be adding additional or new, new equipment, even if it's to replace old equipment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, I think three days is silly. <clears throat> we don't have to follow it. I mean, it's, who's, who's going to approve our PowerPoint? Um, they wanted to put it in their packet. Well, But I thought there, there you mean was. a packet for yeah that's for what? that's confusing too yeah okay all right but we don't want to wait till the last minute anyway they, they put it in the packet because because they know they they fully notify the public on an advance of the meeting the public meeting and so that's why they want it is to be able to upload it, I'm sure, to Clark Field. So the PowerPoints would be available before the meeting? Right. They're going to live stream the meeting, and they want to have the same options, which I don't know if we have the technology to support here, but I guess we're going to Oh, that's right. It's here. Yeah, sure. I don't know if we have enough room, because there's 15 people just on the, the various yeah, that boards, to. and then if there's a small army of citizens who show up, I mean, it's going to be an interesting fit. So, Colin, you're taking time off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. full time. You're going to be gone those three days. Oh, yeah. So, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, I've got three meetings tomorrow, <laughs> but I'm sure I could fit something else in. Well, so could I. When? When did they? But I haven't the heard. Between. Are you eager to do this? Am I eager? No, no, not terribly eager. But you'd be um, willing to do it? I'd be willing to do it. Marilyn? I appreciate Colin's offer. Excuse me, I didn't mean to no, that's right. talk about me, but I, I, at this point, for what this is, I don't really s see Colin's need to, for input. I mean, I think we know what, you know, we know what's looking, 
to our future and uh, what our needs are going to be. Um, so I, you know, I just don't see that we have to break his back. Okay, well, I'm not the one most up to date on the numbers. It's, I don't think it's a numbers issue exactly. Yes, there's, there's numbers involved, but um, we haven't even started on the 23 levy. Talking about it yet, right? Oh, the renewal? Yeah, the renewal. It's, a 20, it's 23 or 24? I thought it was 24. Okay, well, we haven't even started talking about 24. <laughs> well, we better check on it. And there's no reason to until you get through this level. And it's just a waste of, it's just a waste of time and crap. Except for in the spirit of this meeting, I would assume that people are going to be reporting on their, their renewals when their renewals are coming up. Yeah. We, 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 well, we, can do that. we know what they're paying, what, what those levies are paying for. And we have charts of that already worked out. We've meshed, we have a calendar that we've shared. Okay, so oh, I, could, I could put together a PowerPoint uh, structure without, or with tentative numbers during the day tomorrow. That'd be wonderful. And then by the end of the day, share it. That would be. And I would assume it would be dramatically changed. But. Mm -hmm. Why would it be dramatically changed? Well, um, because you guys would have other ideas, okay. <laughs> other insights. So to your question about whether or not you have the ability to screen for the today, I'm more than happy to coordinate with Josue and figure out if they got a plan for that. If they don't, I know that you, I'm just confirmed with Colin that you have Wi-Fi here. If I can have access to the Wi-Fi, I just got done um, doing a four-hour uh, Zoom annual meeting for the Buckeye Trail Association from the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Um, and I, we're including video and the speakerphone capability. Good work. That would be, uh, uh, YSDC has been Zooming and has been having meetings. Lacey from two or three village, people for the station manager. I know, but to, that. to, to from different, there. from different places. Okay. That's not, I just thought I would, I would offer that. Well, but <coughs> please. We need an outside tech to, to, to set it up and, and, and I know borrow that. an owl from Antioch. And you don't need an owl, but okay. Uh, um, I think YSDC also is supposed to receive within a few days an, an owl as well. That's not the same kind of owl like the school board has that you talk to when you're stuck before them, is it? No, okay. yeah, they no. have an actual owl. Oh, oh no, no, this is a, okay. a cylinder that it, 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 rotates it, it, it towards, towards the voice. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. go towards the voice. Ah, that always makes out. me dizzy. Okay. I just have okay. a camera that covers the I was thinking Harry Potter. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I would love to take. You well, up let's see. If, there, if there's something else there, I'm just saying, if that is a problem, I will be, I will be happy to help. If it's not a problem, I will be happy not to help. <laughs> hmm. Judy's been Judy Kintner has been copying me on emails to their station manager for Channel Five, who I guess is the Zarina of mm -hmm. of this. So I'd love to know we have Wi-Fi here. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, 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 that'll be taken care of then. Okay. Yeah. So they're going to set up a camera, another camera person, and another person on a laptop. And... Okay. So, yeah. Maybe move this to the bay or something. <laughs> Sounds like me and you don't have to do tech done. I, I, I don't know how to do tech. <laughs> well, but I will, I'll, I'll send you something by the end of the day tomorrow. Okay. The rest of these things, I guess, we'll just find out as we get there. I mean, roundtable discussion, we don't seem to have to probably prep on that much. Collaborative possibilities. 
follow-up meetings, financial roundtable. But you did make reference to cost of living right. and the key group. We are presenting in this room on the 22nd this week. Uh, cost of our decennial cost of living report, uh, which I'm really excited about. I, I haven't read it. I'm looking forward to it. Decennial is that every ten years? Yep, this is the third, third one. So there's background data to talk about cost of living as compared to other towns in the area. Just to throw it in, since you're talking about the decennial things, just to put it in back of everybody's mind, in four more years is the 250th annual birthday of the United States. So I want to consider what the township might want for that. Just tell you. Yeah, in two years What's is that? the solar eclipse here in Ohio. Yes. Full, full eclipse. Full, full, full eclipse. We'll, we'll put, put those on our future agenda. States already planning for it. Pardon? States already planning for it. Visitors? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, millions of visitors. And um, Normal people and crazy people, and, you know. The whole <laughs> if you need eclipse glasses, let me know. Brandon. Anything else for more this evening? Eclipse glasses. That's right. I did not take a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I second. I mean, I, I still move. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Uh, a second. Thank you, Don. We are adjourned. See, you get fire department branded eclipse track classes, sell them for twice what you buy them for, and you get to be fired by the association.